All right, everybody. The time is now <clears throat> uh, one twelve Central Standard Time, and uh, New Periscope Sunday. Hi to you, Sean. Just say where you're coming from as you're coming in the room. Just let me know where you're at. Where you're signing in from? Ohio. Glad that you're in here with us. Chicago, Boston, Colorado, Tacoma, Washington, Germany. Florida, Atlanta, Cleveland, Michigan, New York, Pennsylvania, Boston, GA, Baltimore, Netherlands, Toronto, Dallas, Toronto. Okay, as you're coming in, Bahamas and everyone else, as you're coming in, you can share this Periscope by swiping from left to right. Uh, swiping from left to right if you're on an iOS device. Scroll down, click on share, share on Periscope, Twitter, Facebook. If you're on an uh, Android device, you can swipe from up to down. Scroll, click on share, share via Periscope, Facebook, Twitter. Going to want to get this out there. The title of this Periscope is the Isis Trojan Horse, the Paris Attacks. And we're going to go into this a little bit beyond Paris. Brazil, Paulo, Sao, Sao Paulo, Brazil, how you doing? England, Brazil, glad that you guys are in here with us. Happy week. All right, everybody. So let's get right into it. Brooklyn, I see you. All right, so... Just go ahead and share this with everybody before we get started. Atlanta ATL. And I'm going to be sharing some details. I'm going to be sharing some details. How are you doing over there, um, Laurel? Definitely not in ISIS. But uh, um, below Nasty, I'm inviting you. Belfast, how are you doing? Subscribe. I'm inviting you to P. Jones. How are you doing, brother? Um, I'm inviting you to follow over here, though. Okay, brother? All right, before I get into anything, I'm going to have a word of prayer. And I just want to share with you some, I'm going to share with you some facts. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to share with you some facts, some important facts. All right? Hey, bro. Zui, how you doing, brother? Important facts before we get into anything. And I think you want to take a look at this. So before I get into anything, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you for the blessed opportunity that we have to come together. And I do ask and pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us. That your spirit will grant us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Please make these things plain to our understanding. And I'm asking, Father, please, that you would uproot out of my heart pride and self-trust and self-righteousness. Please just use me as a conduit for these things to be made plain. So that he that readeth might run. Thank you for hearing our prayers. We ask for the presence of your angels to move in all of our homes and your spirit to move on all of our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so once again, once again, this is online truth time. That's what this is. All right, so title of this scope is ISIS Trojan Horse Paris Attacks. Now, I'm going to share with you some news clippings. I'm going to share with you some news clippings, very relevant, because some things have come out now from the recent attack that took place in Paris this past Friday which most of us know claim over 120 lives, just like that, and it's being categorized by the French government as an act of war. Earlier this year, in the month of March in particular, RT News did an interview with uh, Colonel Gaddafi's cousin. If you remember, Gaddafi, that was the ruler over Libya, I have to say ruler because he was pretty much a monarch. Um, he had something to say about what he predicted would take place in Europe. I want you to see this. There we go. This is the article from RT News. As you can see, this is the date there, March 20, 2015. Europe will face a 9-11 within two years. Let me turn the screen here. He said, Europe will face a 9-11 within two years, Colonel Gaddafi's cousin said. He knew that Europe was going to face a 9-11 situation because of the destabilization of Libya. And he knew there were multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes of radical Islamists that inhabited the borders of Libya. And when Libya was destabilized, let me flip the screen over again. He knew that when Libya was destabilized, that these individuals would then migrate 
into the nearby European nations. He knew it. He knew it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And he was right. In under two years, in just months, there was a 9-11 event in Europe because they are classifying what just took place in Paris this past Friday as their 9-11. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about this before a couple of periscopes back that this whole Syrian refugee crisis did not look good because it only made sense it only made sense for ISIS operatives to mingle themselves in with these Syrian refugees to come across the borders into the adjoining nations to perpetrate attacks but going under the guise of refugees. It only made sense. Now, I want you to see this news video clip. Hi to you, Burita. I'm glad that you're in here. I hope that you learned something that will take you beyond ignorance. And so I want you to take a look at this news clip because this news clip that we're going to look at right now is going to really help you to understand a few more things. All right, so let's take a look at it. Here we go. She's migrating from the terror that is life in Syria and even Afghanistan has started a trickle effect here. We had served two uh, families already. We're expecting one more soon and we don't know how many more, but we do expect more. Martin Gutierrez of Catholic Charity says sometimes refugees have relatives already here, sometimes not. So it's a matter of uniting the families, which is something that the church really promotes, obviously. Some of them don't have relatives, and we try to um, help them become, you know, integral parts of our communities. But some have argued against the U.S. accepting Syrian refugees. They fear terrorists might slip through the cracks. We turn to former local FBI chief and anti-terrorism expert Jim Bernazani for insight on whether that should be a legitimate concern. If I was in charge of ISIL logistically, I'd take advantage of the situation and put my people in, into the United States. Now, with that said, the FBI is on top of this big time with our Joint Terrorism Task Force. And uh, we have what's known as a terror screening center that all these individuals will be run through. But make no mistake, not every refugee seeking admission into the U.S. would face such scrutiny. It's going to be the 18 to 45-year-old male, for the most part. It's a percentage game. St okay, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. I want you guys to miss what was just said here. All right? So this guy is saying, listen... By the way, this is a former FB, FBI head. And this gentleman is saying, listen, if I, was, if I was in ISIS, I would make it, I would make it my duty to make sure that I put my operatives in with these, these refugees. I mean, it, only made, it would only make sense. It would only make sense. But then, of course, then he comes behind that and he says, but you know, listen, the FBI, they're on top of it. They're really on top of it. And, and they're putting them through a stringent process, screening them. And, and that's supposed to make us feel good. That's supposed to make us feel good. But then he lets us know that really the people that are going to go under the most scrutiny, the people that are going to go under the most scrutiny are males that are from age 18 through 45, males that are age 18 through 45. And that's supposed to make us feel good. Now, number one, there ain't no way under God, on God's green earth that they're going to be able to weed out every ISIS agent, even if they're looking at males from age 18 to 45. There's no, there's no system in place on God's green earth that can actually be able to help them identify who in that group has been radicalized and is in position to carry out the agenda of ISIS. Ain't no, there is absolutely, positively, no type of process that they could have in place that could pick every needle out of the haystack. Impossible. 
But let's go one step further. Go, let's go one step further. They said the people that are going to come under the closest scrutiny are males 18 through 45. Well, now we got a problem. You know why? Recently, the Daily Mail just released an, released an article concerning the attacks that took place in Paris. I want you to see what information has just come out concerning the recent terror attacks in Paris. Yes. Revealed. Two of the jihadists sneaked into Europe via Greece by posing as refugees and being rescued from a sinking migrant boat. And survivors say one of the attackers was a woman. Oh, there goes your 18 to 45 male. But did it take rocket science to figure out that there were going to be some some ISIS agents that were actually going to perpetrate being serious Syrian refugees? I mean, you really need a college degree to figure that one out? Really? And then furthermore, they've just identified that one of the agents were women. One of the agents was a woman. So now, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We've been screening refugees from Syria and allowing them into the United States of America for some time now. I mean, we're not, we didn't just start. We've been letting them in for some time now. And we've been using this process of screening males 18 to 45. How many females have come in? And how many of them might actually be ISIS sleepers? <laughs> but you know what's even worse about this? No, wait a second, it gets even better. You know what gets even worse about this, right? I'm going to show you what gets worse. <laughs> on November 6th, November 6th, ladies and gentlemen, November 6th, on November 6th, which is, what is it? What is that? What was that? Uh, seven days? Seven days before the attack in Paris. On November 6th, seven days before the attack in Paris, Guess what the USA started doing? I'm going to show you another article. Another article from the CBC. Take a look at Syria refugee crisis. U.S. open centers to speed the vetting. <laughs> Seven days before the actual crisis took place in Paris, the United States of America moved to open up new centers to help speed up the process to bring Syrian refugees into the United States. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Let's keep going. Hold on a second. Take a look at this. The Obama administration is moving to increase and accelerate the number of Syrian refugees who might be admitted into the United States by opening new screening outposts in Iraq and Lebanon, administration officials told Reuters on Friday. The move comes after President Barack Obama pledged in September to admit an additional 1,000 Syrian refugees in 2016. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. So seven days before the crisis took place, seven days before the crisis took place in Paris, they actually begun speeding up the process to bring Syrian refugees into the United States of America because they want to bring 10,000 in. And by the way, did you know that there are hundreds, thousands that are already here in the United States of America? There are 200 alone in Texas. Did you know that? 200 alone in Texas, and they're bringing them family after family into New Orleans. And the process that is in place, particularly, is focusing on males 18 to 45. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Does this make any sense to any of you out there? Tell me. Hold on a second. I'm going to stop for a second. I'm not going to talk anymore for a second. I just want to know if I'm the only one that's seeing there's something messed up with this. What do you guys think? Does this make sense to you? Do you see a problem with this? I'm waiting. Somebody says it's messed up. You agree. But they're concerned about Mexican inmates. You're saying, yes, yes, it's totally messed up nonsense. 
You're not the one true. I kind of feel bad for the real refugees. I hear you. They're not all from Syria. Others are Muslims. Definitely there's a problem. You're absolutely right. I'm not absolutely right. The facts are right. Right? It doesn't make any sense. So hold on. You know something, guys? This is what I did. This is what I did. Because I knew that I was going to deal with this information for you, with you today, I decided to put together a little diagram, just a little cartoon-like diagram to help us better understand what's going on. Maybe we can make some sense out of all of this. So here's my little cartoon diagram. Here we go. So we've already been able to find out. This is my little cartoon diagram. We've been already able to find out from the recent news report from the Daily Mail that yes, ISIS has actually used the Syrian refugee crisis as a Trojan horse. They used it as a Trojan horse to get into Europe and they found entrance into Paris. And as a result of finding interest into Paris, they set Paris on flames by having simultaneously well-organized terrorist strikes that have been categorized by the French government as an act of war. Now, let's fast forward to the United States of America. We have the same Trojan horse carrying ISIS agents into the United States, possibly, maybe. What do you think? And Obama is saying, oh, you guys, you shouldn't worry. You know, we've got the FBI process. We're making sure that we're vetting everybody and males that are 18 to 45, they're really under close scrutiny. We're making sure all you guys out there that think there's something wrong with this, this is bad. Don't, don't, uh, hold on a second. You know, we need to help them. We need to help them. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to think about this. The United States of America is a country that has people that love to eat unclean animals like pig. Islam doesn't like that. America is a country that promotes pornography. Islam doesn't like that. America is a country that allows women to hold a position in society that they don't believe that women should hold and dress scantily. Islam doesn't like that. America is a nation where men are free to drink alcoholic beverages. Islam doesn't like that. And, oh yeah, by the way, on the back of our $1 bill, we have the all-seeing eye, which they think is the Dajjal, the Dajjal, which to them is Satan, the Antichrist, and we don't think that they're going to come in here and do the same thing they did in Paris? The irony. The irony. That's right, that's right. They think we're infidel. Wait a second. If you guys are understanding what I'm saying right now, put hearts on the screen. If, if you're understanding what I'm saying right now, put hearts on the screen. I'm just saying. Can you all see this? Is this right side up? Is it clear to everybody right now? So now... <laughs> Let, let, let's, let's, and now they're saying, well, you know, Obama, Obama's not going to help us. Obama's not going to help us. So we're going to look to one of these potential presidential candidates in 2016. Maybe one of them will be our savior. Maybe one of them will help us. Maybe it will be Ben Carson. Maybe it will be Donald Trump because he'll bomb the oil fields. Maybe it'll be Hillary Clinton. I mean, maybe one of them can save us. Maybe one of them can help us. Let me tell you something. You better stop looking to these men to help you. Because right now, it seems like men are the people that are trying to put you in a corner. The Bible makes it very clear in the book of Psalms, chapter 146 and verse 3. Put not thy trust in princes, neither in the son of man in whom there is no help. There is no help in the politicians. There is no help in the presidents. There is no help in the political leaders of this world. These men are not going to deliver us from the situation that's right before us. They're not going to help you. They don't have the ability to help you. 
The Bible said it, Psalms 146 and verse 3, Put not thy trust in princes, neither in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Our only help, ladies and gentlemen, in the conflict that is right before us must be in the Lord. You can't put your trust in politicians. You can't even put your trust in the military. You know, in the Bible, God uses horses to symbolize military might. In the book of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 31, the scripture says, The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Our only safety is not in man. Our only safety is not in stockpiling guns. Our only safety is not in, not in having a strong U.S. military. Our only safety is in God. The Bible tells us again in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 22 and looking at verse 3. The God, of my, the God of my rock, he is my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my high tower and my refuge. My savior, thou shalt save me from violence. The only one that can save us from the violence that is getting ready to come on the land, ladies and gentlemen, it is God and God alone. He is our only safety. He is our only deliverer from the violence that is getting ready to take place on planet Earth. But you know something? The Bible says there is a requirement. There is a requirement for us to be able to know of a surety. That God will stand as our savior. That God will stand as our shield. That God will deliver us from violence. You want to know what that requirement is? The Bible speaks of that requirement in the book of Psalms, chapter 20 and verse 7. It says, some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. See, only those that remember the name of the Lord our God will be able to stand in the day of the horse. They will be able to stand in the day of battle. And I want you to think about this with me. To remember something, it has to be in your mind. To remember something, it has to be in your head. We have to have the name of the Lord our God in our head. And God says he will have a people that will have his name in their head. In the book of Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1, the Bible says, And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads. Ladies and gentlemen, God will have a people that will remember the name of the Lord their God. They will keep the name of God in their minds. They will have the name of God written on their foreheads. They will be a people that follow the Lamb. And that name of God being written in their foreheads, it is the seal of the living God. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 7 beginning at verse 1, And after these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, so that the winds would not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice unto the four angels, unto whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Verse 4 goes on to say, And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 7 verses 1 through 3 that the very same group, the very same group that receives the seal of the living God are the very same group that are identified as having the name of the Father written in their foreheads. These are the people that remember the name of the Lord their God. And because they remember the name of the Lord their God, because they have communion with God and His Son Jesus Christ, He is able to seal them in His truth so that when the winds of strife are let loose and violent breaks out on, violence breaks out on planet Earth, they will be kept they will be established on the rock because God will be their shield. God will be their refuge. God will be their high tower. He will keep them when calamity comes on planet earth. Do not put your trust in princes. You better put your trust in the name of the Lord your God. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, that is why the study of the book of, Re of Revelation is so pertinent in this hour. Because only those that remember the name of the Lord our God, 
Only those who have the seal of the living God. Only those who have the name of the Father written in their foreheads. Only these will be those who will stand in the hour of calamity. And that is why it is so pertinent that we must study the book of Revelation in this hour. Because the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Verse 3 goes on to say, Blessed is he that readeth, and he blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things. Listen to that. Keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. God pronounces a blessing on those that read the words of this prophecy, hear the words of this prophecy, and don't miss the final part, keep the words of this prophecy. Keep the writings of the revelation of Jesus Christ, because the time is at hand. The word keep there means to observe, it also means to guard. Let's deal with the word observe. It's saying that those that observe the teachings of the book of Revelation will be blessed because the time is at hand. Now remember, the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the revelation of what? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And therefore, if you are, if you are keeping or rather observing the teachings of the revelation of Jesus Christ, it means that you're observing, listen closely, you're observing the word of God because Jesus Christ is the word of God according to John chapter 1 and verse 1 which says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God but then the Bible goes on to say about that very same Jesus Christ in John chapter 1 and verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth listen to this when you are observing the book of Revelation, you are observing Jesus Christ. That means you're observing the word of God because Jesus is the word of God. But when the word of God was made flesh and was given the name Jesus Christ, we beheld the glory of the Father. So when you are observing the writings of the book of Revelation, you are observing the glory of God. Do you know what the glory of God is? The Bible tells us what the glory of God is in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 33, beginning at verse 18, where Moses was talking with God. He said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Moses asked, Moses asked God to reveal to him his glory. God responds in verse 19 of Exodus chapter 13. I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious, and will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. So when God told Moses he would reveal his name to him, what he was really getting ready to do is reveal his glory to Moses. God's glory and his name are one and the same. Now, what is the name of God? What is the name of God? The name of God, ladies and gentlemen, is spoken of in Exodus chapter 34, verses 5, 6, and 7. But I don't want you to miss the important point that I just presented to you, and it might have just gone right over your head. We just found out that by observing the writings of the book of Revelation, keeping the writings of the book of Revelation, what we are observing is the glory of God being revealed through the Son of God, Jesus Christ. But, when you are observing the glory of God, what are you observing? You are observing the name of God. Wait a second. Who are going to be saved in this time? Who are going to be kept from the violence in the land in this time? Those who remember the name of the Father. Those who have the name of the Father written in their foreheads. By studying the book of Revelation. We are engaging in an observation process by which God can imprint his name upon our characters, by which God can instill his truth into our hearts, by which we can be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ, by which the word can be made flesh in us so that others can reveal the glory of God in us as we walk here on planet earth so we can be ambassadors of the true and living God. Let's go a little bit deeper than this. Let's go a little bit deeper than this. Let's go a little bit deeper than this. If you observe the writings of the book of Revelation, remember the Bible says, blessed is he that readeth. 
and hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. If you are keeping the writings of the book of Revelation, that means you're observing Jesus Christ because it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. But remember, Jesus Christ is the word of God. Now, wait a second. Jesus is the what? Jesus is the word of God. But Jesus also says of himself in the book of John, John chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is Jesus? Put truth on the screen. I want to know that you're all with me. Put truth on the screen. Jesus is truth. Put truth on the screen. Put some hearts on the screen too because we're sticking together on this. What is Jesus? Jesus is truth. I want you to think about this. So when you're observing the book of Revelation, when you're observing the book of Revelation, you're observing Jesus Christ, which means you're observing the word of God, which means you're observing the truth. Well, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 17 and verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So as you observe the book of Revelation, as you observe the revelation of Jesus Christ, as you observe the word of God, you're observing the truth which can have a sanctifying effect upon your life, which means it makes you into a holy creature set apart for God's eternal use and you will accomplish what God's design is for you because God said, be ye therefore holy even as your Father, which is in heaven, is holy. How are you going to obtain to that? You need to keep those things which are written therein. The revelation is now. The time has come to pass. You must observe those things which are in the revelation. But hold up. Let's go one step, one step further. Because the book of Revelation is what? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ. But Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen, according to the book of John chapter 1 and verse 29, is the Lamb of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 29, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So when you are observing the book of Revelation, you're observing the Lamb. And to properly observe something, to properly observe something, you have to follow it whithersoever it goeth. <laughs> You have to follow it whithersoever it goeth. And guess what? In Revelation chapter 14, those individuals that have the name of the Father written on their forehead, in verse 3, the Bible says, These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. And where is he going to lead you? I'm going to tell you where he's going to lead you. The Bible says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He will lead you into a lifestyle in which you are daily, daily gaining victory over sin. When you behold the book of Revelation, when you observe the writings of the revelation of Jesus Christ, you are entering into an experience with the Lamb in which He can lead you into a daily, daily, daily communion with Him that will lift you up high above your fallen human nature, that you can unite with divinity and begin to gain victory over sin because you will come to a comprehension of the type of character that all must possess if they desire to enter in through the gates that will take you into the eternal city so you can stand on the sea of glass and rejoice before the throne of God forever and ever. Amen. Hold on a second. We got to go one step further. This next one, this next one is for everybody that was with me in Periscope last night. Because I told you the word keep those things which are written therein, it doesn't only mean to observe, but it means to guard. Hold on a second. What are you guarding? You're guarding the revelation of Jesus Christ. What is the revelation of Jesus Christ? That means you're guarding the revelation of the word of God. What are you guarding? You're guarding the glory of God in your life. What are you guarding? You're guarding the truth of God in your hearts, making sure nothing takes it out. What are you guarding? You're protecting the lamb. <laughs> You're protecting your relationship with the Lamb because as you come to understand that the teachings of the book of Revelation are right now being fulfilled right before our faces and you come to understand that God has set in place a plan of redemption, a way of salvation by which humanity can be redeemed from the cursed state of sin and lifted up to a position where Jesus Christ can extend to you. 
the fulfillment of this promise. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. In the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 21. When you come to the understanding of these precious, beautiful, present truths, you begin to protect your relationship with the Lamb. You won't let anything strip the word of God out of your heart. You'll hold on to the faith. You'll continue to move forward in the sanctification process. You'll protect the Lamb. Hashtag protect the Lamb. You know exactly what I'm talking about if you were here yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly where we're at right now. That's exactly where we're at right now. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horsemen. But we, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. That's where our hope is. That's where our trust is. That is who we'll remember. That is who we will remember. And that is who will save us. He will keep us. He will establish us. He will shield us. And if we're faithful, he will seal us. It's time that we focus on protecting the lamb. Because the time is at hand. This is where we're at. The time is at hand. And so I want to encourage everyone. For those of you that weren't here and you're new in the room, we've got a movement going on for this week. It's hashtag protect the lamb. Hashtag protect the lamb. You're seeing everybody put it up on the screen because that's our movement for this week. Hashtag protect the lamb. That's our watchword. That we're not going to let anything get in between us and our relationship with Jesus Christ. We're going to keep those things which are written therein. We're going to stay established in our walk with Jesus Christ. Because it's clear there's a crisis in the land. There's clear there's a conspiracy in the land. It's clear Jesus Christ is soon to come. And only those whose names are retained in the Lamb's book of life will stand. And so our watchword this week. That we're putting out there for one another. To keep each other focused and what our objective is, is hashtag protect the land. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. All right, everybody, before I close, matter of fact, I'm going to say a word of close, prayer before I, I'm going to say a short word of prayer. Then I'm going to talk to everybody that's new. Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for the truths that you have revealed to us and that Man looketh on the outward appearance, but you look on the heart. You see the heart of every situation that is going on. You take us into the deep things that are taking place in this world. And I'm so thankful that you have granted us your spirit to guide us into all truth. I pray, therefore, that each one of us will be faithful in our walk with you this day and every day that you grant us breath. May we keep those things which you have taught us. May your truth be fixed in our hearts. May we be sanctified by your word and sealed with your spirit. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Who's new in the room right now? If you're new in here right now, you just stumbled in. Put an S on the screen. Just say, I stumbled in. Put an S on the screen. You're stumbling. By the way, for those of you. Okay. Here we go. Stylist. God sustains. Legacy. Destiny. Merrimai. Cutie. Reds. How you all doing? How are you guys doing? Glad that you're in here with us. Welcome to all of you guys. Here's another one. Laker Man 50. Glad that you're here. Shine Rock. Hashtag. Glad that you're in here. All right. I want to invite all of you guys to follow here on Scope. I like you put the hand up, Keena. Keena. I like that, Keena Johnson. Hand up. Hand up to you. <laughs> and uh, we, um, we invite you to follow us here over here on Scope. You see everybody's real warm in the room right now saying welcome to you guys. We're inviting you to follow here on Scope. Be a part of the, the movement. And, um, and, uh, not new, I'm old. Always got a character that guy say, I'm not new, I'm old. Uh, Mr. M Mr. Mo Spice. Okay, Mr. Spice. I'm just going to say that. Glad that you're here. And, um, want to invite you to follow here on the scopes. Also have videos on the Forerunner on, on YouTube. If somebody could put the YouTube up, up on the screen. I appreciate that. It's the Forerunner Chronicles. The Forerunner 777, actually. That's the YouTube. The Forerunner 777. Thanks, Sim Her. It's right there. If you see it right there, YouTube.com. The Forerunner 777. 
That's the YouTube channel. A lot of videos on the YouTube channel. All right, Wiki. A lot of videos on the YouTube channel, so I invite you to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Follow here on Periscope. Make sure you follow on um, Facebook, like on Facebook, and follow on Twitter as well, at 4RN777. I'm going to be putting up a lot of things over there. I was going to put something up there today, but, you know, I think I did put something up there today. I don't even remember, but... Oh, and I want to invite you to watch a new documentary that I put out not too long ago. Um, it's called Leopard Vision. Leopard Vision. Really important documentary. So I want to invite you guys to uh, watch that documentary. Leopard Vision, Volume 1. How you doing? I'm um, Scotia902. Glad that you're in here and that you stumbled in. You're not a stumbling anymore. You're part of the movement, brother, or family. Or just you know, follow here on Scope. You can follow here on Scope and uh, follow on YouTube. and uh, On YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Somebody, can you put the YouTube up on the screen again for Stylicious? Stylicious. <laughs> But Stylicious, can somebody put the YouTube on the screen for Stylicious? Where do you get the documentary? You can actually watch the documentary on YouTube. It's free. Um, I have I have a free version up on YouTube. That's the four. It's the Forerunner. I'm um, excuse me. It's Leopard Vision, Volume One, by uh, the Forerunner Seven Seven Seven. You can watch it over there. If you want to see the director's cut that has some additional scenes in there after you watch Part One, you can get that on Vimeo Demand, and it's like you know a small price to pay for it, but, um, okay, you've seen it, good, good, I'm glad that you've been watching the video, Stylicious, um, and the price that you're paying on that is actually going to help to, um, fund Leopard Vision Volume 2, okay, so that's it, and, um, I'm gonna stop it right there, buy it for me, who's saying buy it for me, it's there, <laughs> Leopard Vision Volume, Leopard Vision Volume 1, um, I'm, I'm, I'm the creator of it, well, you can take a look at it, okay? Is it in the book? No, it's actually, it's just it's just in a documentary form. It's like a film documentary. You, you definitely like to take a look at it. Three Pedation, glad that you're in here. Invite you to follow here on Scope as well. And um, what's your email? At the number four, then runner 777. Oh, excuse me. It's the number four, then runner 777 at gmail.com. Can somebody put the email on the screen for me? I appreciate that. There it is. Thanks a lot, Demetrius. That's the email right there. You just learned the true Sabbath? <laughs> Praise God for you. VA Beach, glad that you're in here. Invite you to follow here on Periscope. Glad for you, my sister. And um, God is good. More to come, more to come, more truth to come, more truth to come. Um, and that's it. Anybody else new in here that didn't say anything? If not, I'm going to close in prayer. Anybody else new? Come on, come on, Pinkerberry, bomb, bomb. I don't know what's going on. I don't worry about anything. I don't know why did why did the Pharisees distance themselves from Jesus? Um, I don't know. I'm not worried about that. We just stay focused. We stay focused. All right. Um, we stay focused, you guys. We're not in here for controversy. We're in here for truth. We we'll let them deal with the controversy. We. It's like it's like it's like our brother Nehemiah said. He said, "I can't come down. I got a great work to do. We don't have time to come down off the wall right now. Contro we don't have time for that. We got we got a work to do right now. We've got a work to do right now. We don't have time for the controversy. Let the brethren fight between themselves if that's if that's what they want to do. We got war to we got war to accomplish right now." Hashtag protect the lamb. That's what we're focused on right now. Hashtag protect the lamb. That's what our focus is. Amen. All right, everybody. All right. Um, all right. So enough candidness. I'm glad that we're all able to come in here. And I, I pray that you hold on to the things that we have learned in here because these things are serious. All right. But, you know, I give a little candid at the end of these broadcasts from time to time, you know, just to invite those that are new, just to invite those that are new. But. Let us not forget these things that we have talked about. These things are solemn, very serious truths. And what God has called us to do is what God desires us to do. And he is looking for us to do. Because if we do not engage in this work, we will not obtain the blessing. And if we fail to obtain the blessing in this hour, we will be like, Ace, we will be like Esau. Seeking carefully, for a place of seeking carefully for a place of repentance with tears. But we will not be able to find it. Of course, you can get a shout out. You already got one. 
All right, guys. God bless you. And uh, let's have a word of prayer. All right? Let's have a word of prayer. Well, before I, do, before I pray, put your prayer request on the screen. Put your prayer request on the screen. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little tired. Put your prayer request on the screen, then I'll get in. Then we'll pray. I'll just take your prayer request. And then um, we'll try to chronicle. Please, put them up once. Just put your prayer requests up once, please. You can begin. Go ahead. Pray for us to get out of Chicago, to be made whole. For the pastors, I remember that simmer. To give me strength, fams, financial, okay. Thank you for your time. God bless you. Praise God. It's a blessing. I need the spirit to overcome sin, sexual sin, okay. Pray for my relapse, okay. Health from husband, I need, okay. Wholeness, finances to be used. Pray for, I'm sorry, you have to put that back on this. Oh, praise report. Oh, you got to put that up on the screen again, all right? So a praise report. Pray for my daughters, family disputes, lust. If you don't hear me say it, then put it up on the screen again, okay. Pray for me to leave the city. If you didn't hear me say your prayer request, then put it up on the screen again. Pray for my wife. Pray for me to protect the lamb. I hear you, Sam. Pray for me for that as well. Pray for my son, Ryan, who has substance abuse problems, walking with God. Alex Lowe, stay in fellowship with God and reflect his glory. I need power to overcome sexual sin. Family co conversion, I am lost, must find God. Please pray for my four children. Um, from Sunday, I have the mind of Christ. Backslid and family members. Praise report, my pastor had a successful... Um, a great procedure. Praise God. We pray for that. Lord, thank you. for. We're going to thank God for that. My family know the truth. My family and I get out of the city. If you didn't hear me say your prayer request, put it up on the screen again. If I already said it, don't say it again. Touch the comments so it can slow down. Okay, I'll do that then. Okay, smart. Well, I didn't know this. Why didn't you tell me that before? I'm praying for Chicago. Let me stop this. Up and coming heart surgery, marriage, family, pray for the... No, nah, it's not working. Because I'm getting ready to block somebody. That my parents get ready. Give up me. Pray for um, who have baptized yesterday. I need them. Okay. Keep on going. Pray for my family to stand together to do his work. Danny and Phoenix. Pray for everybody. Need the power to overcome fear and appetite. Need physical healing. It's working right now, by the way, obviously. Stylicious. I'm in Chicago, too. You're doing shout outs right now, Pinkerberry. Come on. We're just just prayer, press, just just um just uh prayer request right now, please. I need to leave the city. Pray for me, for an evangelist, country home, me and the family, salvation. Okay, praise the Lord. That you will continue for for your prayer, my sister, for your for your marriage with Todd. That you will continue to teach us. Oh, pray for I, pray for me. I, I appreciate that so much. The youth. I appreciate that. I need the prayers. I'll give you my prayer request at the end. Pray for my daughter that she may return to God. Yes, yes. I see you. I see you, Terra Nova. Everything to for the good for those who love God, that I will keep my eyes on God to be made whole, to return to his wholeness, to protect the Lamb, for my next step in ministry, unconverted parents, and my sis, for my friends who left the church and faith. All right. Um, pray for son to be saved. My unconverted brother... My husband will return to God. Thanks for helping me slow this down. Now, 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 now this works now. This makes a lot of sense. Not be fearful. Okay, Papo 777 to not be fearful. Anyone else? Praise God for you. Uh, pray, pray, pray for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Bereavement for Hammer family, my children and family, mothers return to children. Pray. Return to their mothers, return to their children. Pray for brothers who are in need of poor. I passed out GCs yesterday. Praise God. Pray for my family, not save unbelieving friends. Oh, praise God. For Paris, amen. Wayward church members. Pray for people to understand. What else we have? My husband to come to Christ, amen. Okay, Shante 82, I saw that. For God to provide a church holds truth. I'm tired of going to church and no food. Have mercy. Make sure you eat at home, all right? Move forward. You can always eat here too, all right? Move forward in the ministry with faith. Um, Anthony, 9448245. Pray for unsafe family members. Okay. Um, um, Karata, pray all family and friends. Salvation, shine, Ross. Haha, <laughs> I know. Pray for us all to be humble. 
um, to humble ourselves before God, praise God, um, salve. Um, Princess Micah for my Sabbath school. Hey, Tamika, how you doing? Keep the truth at burning, Tamika. For you also, Chris, thanks, brother. Pray for the young people that are in the church that God will make them, um, raise them up in these last days. Pray for my stepson. He's taking hormones to become a woman. Have mercy. We got to pray for that young man. Prayers for you and your work. You do the Lord. God bless. Thank you. I really appreciate that, brother. Please keep me in your prayers. I really appreciate that. Really, really, really appreciate the prayers. You have no idea. No church at all. Five hours from the closet church. <laughs> okay. I appreciate everyone that's putting up prayer requests for me. I really do appreciate that. Pray for covering for you. All right. Okay, so I'm going to pause at this, all right? If you didn't put your prayer request app up as of yet, but it's really pressing, tweet it into me. Just tweet in your prayer request, all right? Tweet in your prayer request or email it. Preferably tweet it in, all right? Tweet it in. Use Twitter to do it. All right, pray for Jose. Yes, definitely. Let's keep our brother Jose in prayer. Pray for people not, um, not to put God on the sidelines as people move up. Okay, let's do that. For the truth to be revealed to us all, praise God, we. Um, let's pray for genuine love. Amen. And let's also pray for the room here that, you know, when the people come in, that the Lord will just grab hold of their minds so that the devil won't be able to use them to talk nonsense. Because um, unfortunately, really, they don't distract me when they come in the room. But I realize that they tend to distract you all. And that's why I've been blocking them. But if it was for me, I would just leave them in here, to be quite honest, because I could care if they were cursing and screaming. If they're, if they're in here hearing the truth, the seeds are being planted in their brains. And one day God might be able to water it, that it might bring forth fruit unto everlasting life. So I don't even mind what they come in and talk all the nonsense. But for the sake of you all that get um, sidetracked by it sometimes, I really block them out. I block them out of the room. So I'm just doing it for your benefit. I'm just letting you know that. All right. True, true, true. I really have 100% tolerance for these people. I have 100% tolerance for them. I don't really have any problem with them coming in and talking the stuff they talk. So we will have a block ministry. Okay, that was a joke. Okay. Um, all right, so that's it. God will bring the increase. So let's pray. Let's pray. Let's get right to it, all right? Let's get right to it. We're going to pray right now. Oh, and I want to present my prayer, my prayer request. Pray God continue to keep you humble and safe. Uh, please pray for me. All right. Um, here's my prayer request, everyone. My prayer request is please pray for my family and myself, my wife, my daughter, myself. Please pray for the ministry. Um, please pray that the Lord, Lord will bless so that um, we can get all the finances to do Leper Vision 2, Leper Vision 3 as well. I really want to get these done immediately. So please pray the Lord will make provisions for all that. And um, yeah, that, that's for the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit. All right, that's it. Let's have a word of prayer. All right, so <clears throat> let's pray. Let's stop the hearts, let's stop the comments, and let's get right into prayer. Let's stop the hearts, let's stop the comments, let's get into prayer. I'm just waiting for you guys so we can do this reverently. All right, whoever, who's ever putting those blue hearts up? Is it possible you could stop? All right, we'll keep going then. Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for the blessed opportunity that we've had today at this hour to come together, to look into the things that are and to the things that will be. And we thank you, Lord, that now, as we've come to the close of our time together for now, that we can all come on our knees before your throne to call upon your name, to ask of you that you would please impart unto us the grace that we so, in, that we so stand in need of, that we might be firm, established in the truth. Lord, we're asking for you to grant us strength that we might have victory over sin. We're praying for you to move upon the hearts of our loved ones, spouses and children that are outside of the truth, that have allowed the devil to allure them with his seductions. Many of them, Lord, are caught up in entertainment and the cares of this life, and they are outside of you, Lord, and they do not understand the value of the plan of redemption. We pray for them that you would open their hearts to receive the love of Christ into their souls, that they might be made into new creatures, enlighten their minds, that they might take the pathway that leads to life eternal and get off the broad, wide path, Lord, that leads to destruction. We pray for our sister's son that is right now confused and is taking hormone therapy, that he might transform that body that you have fearfully wonder and wonderfully made into something that you did not design for him. Open his heart and his mind, that he would yield himself, that he would yield himself to the promptings of the still small voice of thy spirit. I pray for our sister that you would give her strength and comfort in her heart to love her son, Lord, 
and to reveal to him the character of Jesus Christ, that he might be one, O Lord, by him seeing your glory reflected through her. We thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayers on the behalf of Sister Coaches, Sister Ken Kiona's pastor, that he had a safe heart surgery. We thank you, Father, for listening to our petitions, and we pray that, you would, that he would use the help that you have restored unto him for your service and for your glory. And Father, the multitude of other prayer requests that have been made, you know each one that has been enumerated on the screen, each one that has been mentioned, and each one that has not gone up on the screen. But Lord, there are lives in our hearts because some of us feel fearful to even mention the things that we desire to pray for. But I ask that you would take mind of all of these things and minister unto our heart's need, Lord, uh, uh, unto our heart's needs according to your riches and glory, but most of all, according to your will. May your perfect will be accomplished in all of our lives. Thank you for hearing our prayers. We commit ourselves into your keeping. In all these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name and for thy name's sake. Amen. All right. God bless everyone. Stay established, stay strong, stay moving forward. And remember, protect the land. Protect the land. Amen. Put that back up on the screen, Yukia. I want to see what you put up there again. I heard you saying something about giving out a leper vision to a Catholic girl. Can you put that up again? I want to read all of that. Remember, protect the lamb. That's the watchword this week. That's our watchword. Let me stop that. Catholic girl, and she took my contact information. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. First time on the scope. Glad that you're here. And um, you're invited to follow here on scope. All right. Carmen. I think that's what it is. What's leper vision? You got to check it out. It's on YouTube. It's a documentary. It's really a, it's really a, a film doc. It's not just, it's not a regular documentary by any stretch of the imagination. It's going to take you all over the world, literally visit different places in the world, giving a just a massive expose on some of the most important current event information that you would that you could lay your eyes on right now um, to really bring you up to speed. And so, uh, yeah, take take a look at that. All right. It's Leopard Vision Volume One. It's on um, YouTube. You can see it for free right now. All right, brother. Thanks, Emma. That's it. And that's my email. Eve's covered. Thanks a lot for putting that up. Great history on the Vatican and also helping you to know what's going on here. When can we meet heaven? Come on, don't worry about meeting my daughter, my brother. We're not going to be bringing heaven on screen right now, okay? <laughs> when I come to Greece, all right? When she comes with me to Greece, then you'll meet her, all right? Not any time before that. Let's 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 keep it right here. This is this is this is where this is where we need to be. This is all you need to meet right now. All right. God bless everybody. Love you all. Love you, my man Dimitri. You know I'm playing with you. God bless you all. All right. And um, yeah, I've done that. I've made videos dealing with occultism and music videos. If you, matter of fact, if you watch one of my videos that I did a long time ago, it's called uh, Jay Z Deception. Um, it's you know gotten like you know over a million odd views on YouTube. Um, the Jay Z Deception. I have a couple others on on YouTube dealing with that subject matter because I used to I used to pop oh seven seven seven. I actually used to be in the entertainment industry. And so, um, yeah, I, I have a couple of different videos on YouTube dealing with that type of information. And, um, yeah, J Leper, um, Jay Z deception was really, a, um, it was really a blow, um, for the entertainment industry when it came out. It made a lot of those guys like Jay Z and others have to, um, you know, answer about um, symbolism in their music videos. It was one of those. It was actually probably one of the primary videos that that um, brought a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, how can I say it? It really helped to um, agitate the conversation in the entertainment industry concerning um, Freemasonry and occult practices in the, um, 
in the entertainment industry. And those of you out there that know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so anyhow, God bless. Take care. And as always, this is a forerunner. Whether you like it or not, the truth is the truth.